Hello, good afternoon, everyone. So, welcome to part two of a 10 part video series on Google Sheets here on Liquid Brain. So, today we are talking about what is a standard, standard data structure or correct data structure or proper data structure over here, as well as we look up and how to use array formula in this sense. So, let's go to lesson two. So the little objective today, what is a standard or proper data structure, uh, how to use VLOOKUP, which is a short for vertical lookup, as well as how to use um, what is this called, uh, array formula to try to, um, rather than applying the equation one by one, we can actually apply one equation and it will give an output as an array. So it would actually calculate the whole thing in the array and export the whole thing as an array directly. Okay, so the first one, of course, is how to import data into the Google Sheets. So in this case, uh, you can actually use something called e equals import data. I'm not sure you are able to see this. Let me just zoom in a little bit. Okay, so you can actually see that in this cell, I put equals import data as well as the URL to the data. So in this case, you can input all the data as either CSV or TSV directly, and it will just show up directly as a table over here. So this is a very standard uh, cars um, example data. So these are just different, sorry, uh, different models of cars as well as their miles per gallon, the number of cylinder, number of uh, displacement, their horsepower, and so on and so forth. So this is just many many details of car. The content is not important; it's just that I'm using this as a raw data to do my calculations on the further. So you can also see the full data here with how to use import data. So in this case, you just use import data and put a URL and you should be able to get the whole data set directly into Google Sheet without any copy pasting. So if the source here actually updated the data, uh, this data will actually get updated directly instantly as well. So you don't have to care about the kind of refreshes on the backend. Okay, so the problem of course is that uh, it will actually change the data based on the URL. So just to ensure that if you don't want your data to be refreshed automatically, don't use this method. Uh, link just copy paste the data set over here. So you can see that this is the data set. Okay, so the second one is uh, what is the standard data structure? You know, what is the meaning of proper data structure and why is it important? You'll see later on. But the, the, standard, the, the easier definition you can see, you, you will know, is actually that uh, if this column represents the name of the car, it will always be the name of the car. So in this case, if, if the name of the car is in string, so strings meaning uh, words, it will always be words. It will not have like car 001 or 1356770. So everything has to be exactly the same data type within a single column. That's how you make everything works easily in the calculation later. So actually you can see here in the mouse per gallon as well, everything is in the same unit as well as the same data type. So in this case, they are just decimal point. So one or two decimal point, doesn't matter. As long as they are the decimal point, they're numbers. Okay, so same with the rest. So they're all numbers in the back. So they can, they can easily calculate the, uh, the, the calculation later on, you will see. Okay, so the next one is um, it's actually direct, direct um, adaptation to to the data structure, which is VLOOKUP. So vertical lookup uh, is one of the most commonly used uh, functions in Excel, I suppose, and, or in Google Sheets, that sense. So what, is, what, what it does is that uh, you look at a uh, Datsun 7, 710 over here. It does a vertical lookup, means it looks at the other column and it try to get the data on this row. So based on the input, you get the data on this row. So just to go for an example here, Okay, so this is a vertical lookup. Let me just zoom out here a little bit. Okay, so in this case, uh, this is an example of a vertical lookup. So in this case, I have an input of Mazda RX-4 a wagon. I also have a Hornet 4 drive. So you can see that these are just a VLOOKUP equation. So actually you can see here is a VLOOKUP and first is the source of your data. So my source of input here is Mazda RX-4. Okay, then you look up to this array. So if you don't know about array, it's just a data matrix, a two-dimensional data matrix. Okay, so it's B12, which is from here until M44. So M is all the way over here. And you can see that there's some hidden column here. So I've hidden the whole thing so that it doesn't affect our view. So um, everything will remain exactly the same. So maybe if I change to 19, it shouldn't matter, the result should stay exactly the same. Okay, then you can just uh, copy paste here. So, yeah, 
So yeah, so once we're done with the array, the third one is the number of columns you want counted to the right side. So in this case, our source is the first column, uh, MPG is the second column, cylinder is the third column, and so on and so forth. So which is why we put a two over here. So the last one is the search type. Okay, so every time you actually go here, when you type an uh, equation in, so it will actually give you like a help button here. Okay, so you press it in, you can actually see what are the syntax that you need to use uh, for a particular function. So in this case, the first one is the search key, which is the source that we talked about just now. The range is the range of the search that you want to proceed. So in this case, the range usually comprise of the whole initial table. And the third one is an indexer. So indexes means how many column to the right side. So column, the second, so the column next to it is a second column, which is a two. The one next to it is a three, and so on and so forth. The last is is sorted or not. So what's the meaning of is sorted is that uh, based on the definition here, indicates whether the column to be searched is sorted, in which case the closest match for search key will be returned. So in this case, it, it assumes that it is um, a sorted data, so that the match doesn't need to be exact. So they just need to find something uh, more or less similar, they will just return that. So I always use false because uh, I don't really understand how this shortcut works. So when I don't understand something, I tend to just go for the default, uh, which is false, which is uh, computationally a little bit slower, but I'm a little bit more comfortable and a bit more confident that whatever I key in, I look will come out as what I want. Okay, so once you have this four element piped into a VLOOKUP, okay, it will give you directly. So in this case, um, RX MX4 wagon, you can see the MPH is 21. And the third one, you can see the only thing changes here is number three. The next one is the changes is number. So this is number four. And this one should be number five. And this one should be number six. And this one should be number seven. Okay, so in this case, we can see that all of them are correctly piped towards the the row over here. So that's how you can easily transfer the data. Over. So the best thing about this is not just being able to transfer data, but if I want to change to the other car, let's say the value over here, I just paste it in, it will automatically update all the data based on the table and calculation and so on. So which is why I also put another example over here. And if I just copy paste this code, it should again automatically refer to, in this case, Hornet 4 drive and and pull out the result for on and for drive directly. Okay, so that's basically VLOOKUP. So you might notice that just now when I do the array, there's something, there's a dollar sign in front of some of the cell. So in this case, I'm referring to B60, but I have a lock in front of the B character. So in this case, uh, it's actually a locking symbol. I'm not too sure this, I'm not sure about the exact word of this. But what it does, what, what this does is that when I drag my data across column 1 to 7, uh, this, the one that I lock would not change. So in this case, uh, this is uh, B60. So let's look at the next one. It's also B60. And I look at the next one. It's also B60 and so on and so forth. So, so when you lock that uh, column down, when you lock that alphabet up, uh, when you drag it or you copy paste the code, it will not refer because every ref every referring here and there are all relative. So if they are referring to one cell on the left, and you copy paste over, you also be referring to that one cell on the left, which is why in column three here, um, okay, let's just unlock it and see what happens. So this is B60. So when I actually drag the B60 over, you realize that this refer to C60, and this one refer to D60, this one refers to E60 and so on and so forth. So we do not want that because that unpredict that makes things unpredictable. And if you have the same number of column two, you know everything get messed up. So we do not want that to happen. So what we do is that we use something. We use a dollar sign to lock down things that we do not want to change, which is why when we drag, it will be exactly the same. But you realize that you get an error here because even though we are if we did lock B60 over here, we did not lock B12 to M44. So when you go to the next column is C12, N44, the next column is D12, O44, which is wrong because that is not our original table. Our original table is here, which is uh, B12 to N44. So in this case, what we also need to do is not just lock the B over here, 
but also not every character you want on your source table. So when you drag, so however you copy paste your code towards, the it will always refers to the same, uh, the same source and the same reference table. But of course, when you drag, remember you have to change the range index. In order to that column three, so here you want to get column four. Here you want to get column five. Here you want to get column six. Here you want to get column seven. And so on and so forth. So that's how you use the lookup. However, it's very slow. So imagine that every single time you're doing this, you have to you know copy paste, copy paste, copy paste, drag it, and maintain things individually, which is a bit of a of a problem because there's a lot of individual code to maintain. So if you view code over here, you can actually show your formula. You can see that these are all code. So it looks very cluttered. It looks very very messy and very very hard to troubleshoot when 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 you, you, when you find some problem in one of the code, it's very hard to troubleshoot, which is why array formula comes up as really, really useful in this case. So what this array formula means is that for the normal VLOOKUP without the array formula, as you look at the, the equation over here, is the normal VLOOKUP that we have talked about just now, um, it's, it will only output within the cell uh, that you type it in. So one in, one out, and store it. But for array formula, it's actually very, very What's it called? Um, very very efficient in a way that can easily just fit in the whole uh, array. In this case, fit the whole array in as an input, and it will give the whole array here as an output. So what does that mean? Is that it will not have this. All this do not need to be. So let me just delete this. You see that the whole array disappeared. So if I put it in, the whole array come back. So this equation actually generate the whole value run over here. So I can also delete the rest. It will, not, it will not matter, you will, will regenerate instantaneously because you did not uh, delay the original formula. Of course, that makes the user looking at the data a little bit more confusing than it is. But for the sake of simplicity of troubleshooting and less number of coding, it's much better. And it actually introduced a lot less errors. So of course, what I did not do is actually lock this down because uh, even though it doesn't affect the result, it's just a better practice for you to, to always lock things that you don't want to move. Okay, so that's array formula. Um, you can use um, function that usually meant for single cell in and out to get an array in and an array out, basically. Okay, so we'll be talking about index match next time, but just taking note that VLOOKUP can only look at things from towards the right, because VLOOKUP only for two, three, four, five, six, right? So you will only look at the things on the right. So if you want a bit more flexibility, uh, you will have to go to the next video, which is about index match. So in this case, just a very simple summary of what we have gone through today. So first is, uh, what is Google Sheet? Where do you find Google Sheet? And how do you get a Google account? I don't have to teach you that. You already know you're on YouTube. Okay, so second thing is, what is uh, how to actually import data? So to import data, you just go to use the import data functions and key in the URL for the CSV or the TSV file, or you have your file, you can just copy paste it. Much easier. Okay, so. The next one is understanding a proper data structure. What is the standard data structure? What is a proper data structure? Basically means in a column, they're the same data type and a story. Okay, don't mix data type within a column and don't use your raw data as your export table. And the one more thing is that don't put your averages below your data size because now your data gets expanded. So this is just some best practice that I find along the way. So the next one is VLOOKUP. So VLOOKUP has four parts. So VLOOKUP has uh, four, four parts. The first one is the search key, which is what do you want to search? So what is the input towards this equation? The range, which is the original table that you want to search. Index number is how many columns to the right. And the next one is whether the data is sorted or not. So they can easily find the thing. So it's, they, you can see that it's optional. Okay, so that's basically the, the, the second lesson on the Google Sheet tutorial. And we will see you in the next one. Bye.